Following the Korean War that broke out in 1950, Korea has evolved from one of the poorest countries in the region to one of the most vibrant economies. However, the aftermath of the Korean War left the entire nation in ruin, resulting in extreme poverty and chaos. This produced a large influx of prostitutes, as some women resorted to sex work to support themselves and their families. In the 1960s to 70s, many young Korean women were brought into U.S. military camp towns, villages formed around U.S. military bases, to work at foreigners' clubs and were used as a means to earn U.S. dollars. They were treated poorly by U.S. soldiers, as well as Koreans who called them Western wives or Western princesses. These military camp towns were formed around U.S. military bases in cities including Ujeongbu and Dongducheon, and foreign currency trickled out from these Korean women, which some say provided a base for the Korean economy. However, there was a case in the 1990s that played an important role in bringing change within the military camp town, and also played a part in gradually wiping out female sex workers in the area. So let's talk about that case today, the murder case of Yoon Gumi. Yoon Gumi wasn't born into a wealthy family, but she was deeply loved by her parents as she was the only daughter. However, her life took an unexpected turn when her father passed away after falling ill. She was only 17 at the time education was no longer an option for her. She left home to move to the city and worked in factories to put food on the table. Then she heard one day that she could earn more money working at camp town clubs near U.S. military bases. She moved to Dongducheon City in October 1992. That was when she was 26. During the day, she sold flowers and even begged in the streets to make ends meet, but that was never enough to take care of the entire family. So, she started working at one of the camp town clubs called Crown Club, where she entertained U.S. soldiers and often had sex for money. But even though her life was tragic, people who knew her said she was a bright young girl who always helped people in need. Her neighbors recalled her as a kind and caring young girl who never harmed or disturbed anyone. And on October 28, 1992, her landlord noticed that Yoon didn't go to work that day, which never happened before. He stopped by her home to see if she was inside. That was around 4.30 p.m. He called her name in front of her door, but no answer. The door was not locked, so he opened the door and the first thing that he noticed was the nasty smell. What he witnessed that day was a scene that has remained forever traumatic for him. The description of the scene could be distressing for some of you, so viewer discretion is highly advised. There he found the lifeless body of the 26-year-old Yungumi lying on the floor in pools of blood. Her face was severely battered with a Coke bottle, which left a huge dent in her face. The cause of her death was later determined to be excessive external bleeding and the collapse of organs. But what really shocked him was how sadistic and grotesque the murder scene was. She was found completely naked with her legs spread open. Her body was covered with bruises. A Coke bottle was half inserted in her genitals. And to the shock of many during an autopsy, two more beer bottles were found inside her uterus. An umbrella pole was inserted about 10 inches into her anus. Matches were found inside her mouth. Laundry detergents were scattered all over her dead body in an apparent effort to destroy evidence and fingerprints. The Udongbu Police Homicide Department and the U.S. Forces Korea Criminal Investigating Division started a joint investigation. Detectives at the Ujongbo police station collected statements from witnesses and found out that Yoon and a U.S. soldier were seen together the night before her body was discovered. According to witnesses, Yoon was seen very drunk on the streets, and a U.S. soldier held her and took her home. Police started looking into who the soldier was, 
The Coke bottle that was inserted in her genitals had fingerprints all over. So if suspects were to be identified, they could single out Yoon's killer in no time. And on October 31st, just three days after she was found brutally murdered, Korean police arrested West Virginia native Private Kenneth Lee Markle as the prime suspect. Markle was a 20-year-old young man, a medic assigned to the 2nd Infantry Division of USFK. When he was arrested, police found a blood-stained shirt from his possession, and the fingerprints on the Coke bottle were his. If the one who killed her and inserted the Coke bottle was the same person, he was without a doubt the murderer. However, the case hit a wall because he was a U.S. soldier. At that time, to keep U.S. soldiers in Korea after the Korean War, the Korean government had signed SOFA, the U.S. ROK Status of Forces Agreement. The agreement protected the status of U.S. forces and rights related to their stay in Korea, including the right to use U.S. camps and military facilities. But what was also included, which made this case so difficult and later prompted Koreans to raise issues about the unfairness of this agreement, was the clause that the Korean government should send over U.S. soldiers arrested as criminal suspects to the U.S. forces and they should be held only within the U.S. military camp for further investigation. This meant that Korean police could not bring Markle over and interrogate him for his possible crimes until the case was over. And to do so, they had to visit the U.S. military camp whenever they needed to question him only within a limited time with a U.S. official at present. Koreans who learned about this from the media were furious. There were even boycott movements starting from taxi drivers near the Dongducheon area who refused to take U.S. soldiers. And some 50 NGOs got together to form a task force that voiced harsher punishment for Yoon's murderer, sending statements calling for a formal apology to the U.S. forces. The streets of Dongducheon were filled with angry people who took part in rallies, and this movement spread across the nation, including the capital Seoul. Markle was indicted for Yoon's murder. And on February 17, 1993, four months after her death, the trial began. And on April 14, Kenneth Markle was sentenced to life in prison. During his trial, Markle did not show any remorse for the victim. Instead of simply denying the fact that he killed Yoon, Markle during the trial tried to pin the blame on another soldier, specialist Jason Lambert. Markle admitted that he hit her, but said he was not the one who violated her body. Markle claimed that he got into a fight that night with Lambert when he was trying to help Yoon, who was very drunk, when he saw her on the street. Markle claimed that Lambert confronted him because he had sex with her before and he was jealous. According to Markle, when he brought Yoon into her room, she suddenly attacked him and he had to defend himself. And when he came out to leave, he saw Lambert going inside the room to have sex with her. However, this argument was dismissed as his fingerprints were found on the bottles, which he could not explain why. Markle appealed, and a month before the second trial, the U.S. military compensated Yoon's family with 71 million won. The court saw that this partially resolved the case, and he got a reduced sentence of 15 years. Prosecutors appealed, but on April 29, 1994, the Supreme Court upheld the 15-year prison term. Still, he presented an emergency petition to the U.S. Supreme Court to keep him from being transferred. This was of course dismissed, and he was incarcerated in a foreigner's prison in Cheonan. Markle did not stay out of trouble, even in prison. In January 1996, Markle was given an additional eight months to his prison sentence for breaking a plexiglass wall divider and using a fire extinguisher against prison personnel. Markle was supposed to be released in early 2008, but was freed on August 14th with two years and nine months of time left on his sentence. And the next day, he boarded a plane for the U.S. Markle's case did spark debate and protests in the early 1990s, raising awareness about crimes involving U.S. armed forces in Korea. 
And upon this incident, an amendment movement on SOFA started to gain momentum. And SOFA was revised in 2001 so that criminal suspects could be handed over to the Korean investigative authorities as soon as they are arrested. Besides the gruesome nature of the crime, how Yoon's death was used as a political tool by anti-American activists is also a disturbing aspect of this case. Pictures of her dead body was being widely shown on the internet and even at anti-US protests. It is known that teachers also showed the picture to educate their students, which is shocking if you think of it. It's just sad that no one really cared about Yoon. Maybe, to the minds of Koreans at the time, she was nothing but a Westerner's princess. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.